What is going on, you guys? It is the Talking Sasquatch, and it's great to have you back. Hey, you know me. I'm always trying to get the latest and greatest Flipper Zero content, but recently I've been struggling. Now, there just hasn't been that much new or groundbreaking or really exciting stuff going on in the world of Flipper Zero. However, I have gotten some really cool new boards recently. Now, one of those is this guy right here. Now, this guy right here is by Section 80 slash Ruckus, and it's a T-Display S3 mounted directly to a Flipper Zero through the GPIO board. Now, this thing's got all sorts of cool functions we'll talk about in just a little bit. It's actually a pretty cool little board. But wait, there's more. We got a ton more cool stuff to take a look at. Some updates from AWOC Dynamics, some new boards from Rabbit Labs, and even some stuff from Cyber Bros. So sit back, relax, and let's take a look at some really cool new Flipper Zero GPIO boards. Let's get at it. All right, so first thing I want to do is actually go over some really cool updates by AWOC Dynamics. Now, this here is the Dual ESP32 Mini, and this thing is absolutely gorgeous. I printed this clear shell for it last video, and yeah, I've actually got the STL files up, but check this out. Such a cool device. It's got GPS now. So let's switch cameras and take a closer look and see the differences between the last one. All right, so we've got the original ESP32 Mini, and we've got the new one. Let's take a closer look at this guy and see what's going on. All right, let's pop the pin cover off. And as you can see, this thing's absolutely gorgeous. Again, we covered this in last week's video, but you can see we've got a battery up front and a GPS module. So this is all brand new stuff. Very, very cool. He even added a SMA port up here so you could put an SMA pigtail and have an external GPS antenna. Very, very, very cool. So I guess the best way to compare the two is to uh, pull the case off this one and see what's the difference. So let's take it apart. Might as well turn this one around. I guess I don't even have to take that apart, right? And then pull the case off, and here we go. Obviously, the big difference is we're missing the GPS antenna since this ain't got no GPS. We flip around to the front, and you can see it's blank up there. Look at that. That's a big difference. Now, AWOC's always done a great job of making his boards pretty, but this one doesn't quite have the same panache as the new one does. Now, sometimes he does send me prototypes, so it is very possible that this is a prototype, especially seeing as it's got a green PCB, but you can still see there's a lot less going on with the V1. Again, just the side by side, you can see just a huge difference between the two. Let's see if I can flip them without breaking them. There we go. The back's pretty much pretty similar. It's just got obviously the antenna on there. It looks even cooler powered on. And if you want to make your own crystal clear case like that, it brings us to today's sponsor, PCB Way. What, you think I can print something that looks this good myself? Even if I had a resin printer, those things are a hassle, they smell terrible, and they make a giant mess, and you're still not gonna get results as good as what you're gonna get from PCB Way. PCB Way is your one-stop shop for any project you wanna work on. They've got you from start to finish. They can help you design a PCB, print it for you, and then you can design a case and have them print that for you. Furthermore, you need a screen, you need some NeoPixels, whatever you need, they've got supplies for you over on the module store. They've also got soldering supplies, multimeters, screwdrivers, all sorts of great stuff. Visit PCBWay.com for anything you need for your next project. Once again, thank you so much PCBWay for all your continued support. Let's get back at it. All right, that's enough of this guy. Let's take a look at its bigger brother, the full-size dual ESP32 Touch. Now, if we compare the V2 to the V1, we'll immediately see there's a difference. That's right, we actually scaled down the screen size a little bit, and it's gotten a little bit thicker with the addition of the GPS. Now, my original one here is actually printed in some relatively good clear pet G, so you can kind of see through it. This one, obviously, I think this is actually probably PLACF or possibly pet GCF, but let me pull it apart and take a look. Move you out of the <laughs> way. Yeah, so just like the other guy, we've actually got our GPS module right here on the back case. I'll pop this out of here because I absolutely hate plugging those pigtails back in. So let's take a look at the rest. Get the screw out of here. Yar. Then pop the front off and let's refocus. Again, we've got our classic AWOC Dynamics purple PCB. It looks absolutely fantastic. Flip it over. We've got the battery from the GPS again. And yeah, even got war driving down here. I love it. This thing is so sick looking. I'm gonna flip it back around. And yeah, it's absolutely gorgeous. And I do love, it's hard to see, but right there, those are dip switches. He's got them taped over, but those are actually flippable switches. It looks like those dip switches actually allow you to turn the GPS on and off between the flipper and the screen. 
that's super, super cool. And you can see on the V1.1 here, it's still really cool. Don't get me wrong. It just doesn't have GPS. Um, it is kind of neat too. He color coded the USB ports. So you know which ESP32 is plugged into the Flipper Zero and which one is running the screen because they can run different software if you want to. Some absolutely awesome stuff from Avoc Dynamics. I was actually considering trying to modify Marauder so that I could run an animation on a loop and wear that as a badge at DEF CON. I mean, come on, how cool would that be? All right, so let's take a look at that Ruckus board. All right, so here it is. Let's give it a little bit of a take apart. Well, let's flip it over and take a look here. So yeah, Ruckus by section 80. And you can see the uh, the solder work on there. There's a little bit of flux left on there. If we compare it to something like from Rabbit Labs, yeah, there's a little bit of a difference for sure. Editing Sasquatch here. I actually wanted to point out because I didn't realize it when I was filming it. These are sold as kits. So it's not like they bought this out of an Etsy shop looking like that. It's just a DIY kit. So it's not their fault at all. Let's open it up, see what it looks like. So basically what this is, is a Lilygo. There we go. T display plugged into a uh, interface board for the Flipper Zero. Kind of can we plug this out? Yep, we got risers on it. But yeah, this is the actual ruckus board right here. This is what you actually get when you order one. So we got a rocker switch that kind of has a push button. That's pretty cool. And then a couple buttons up here. Not bad. Let's plug it back in and get it running. Plug it right into the Flipper Zero. Now this must use three volt because it fires right up when you get in there. I love that intro screen. That looks really, really cool. So if we look at it right here, it's running Wi-Fi Marauder. And it's not just Call Me Coco. This is, looks like its own version, which is kind of cool. We can press on the dial back here and actually move between different attacks. Now I noticed there's no Bluetooth on there, so we have no Bluetooth attacks, but we have Evil Portal. What kind of attacks do we have? What does this do? Let's see. So we can Rick Roll, you know how that does. We've got the random AP spam. You can set an AP spam. You can mimic an AP, which is cool. Deauth like we could before, targeted Deauth. So it's got most of the Wi-Fi capability of ESP32 Marauder or any of the other Marauders set up. And we've got two buttons on top. What do those do? Oh, that is interesting. Is that screen off or is that restart? Oh, there's a button on top. So that button just turns the screen off. That's actually really cool. Does it turn the lights off too? Nope, just the screen. I wonder if this turns the lights off. I didn't find anything in the documents, but I'm pretty sure it's probably like a boot button or something for the ESP. I, I don't know. Beats me. Um, let's go into Sniff and let's see if we can find my friend the Ponigachi. Scroll down here and then it says, yes, yeah, scanning Ponigachi. Let's give it a second and see if we find him. Two very boring minutes later. Okay, it looks like limited success. I haven't seen him yet. I'm not really sure what it looks like when it pops up. Um, I have actually had some weird issues with my Ponigachi as far as it being recognized by other devices. That may be what's going on now, so I might reflash and try again. Either way, this thing's pretty cool. Anyway, that's the T-Display S3 Flipper Zero GPIO add-on board by Ruckus slash Section 80. Man, it's a mouthful. Now, this next board I actually showed a little bit in the Rabbit Labs video, but if you haven't seen that, this is the Gemini board. This thing's pretty cool. Now, this guy I just think is really cool. It's the Gemini board. It's a CC1101. It's tuned for either 433 or 900, and you can actually tune it back and forth. Actually, let's plug it in and see it work. All right, we'll sit in the middle. That's going to be the external. So let's go to our sub gigahertz. Let's enable our external radio settings. Turn this to external. Ooh, it doesn't even identify it because I don't have the switch switch. That's cool. Radio settings. Now we go to external and you can see now we're at 900 megahertz. So we can switch this over. It's going to go over to 433 megahertz. Super cool. So depending upon what you're trying to do, the different antennas are tuned to two different frequencies. If an antenna is tuned to a frequency that's close to what you're trying to use, it's going to work a lot further. So this actually has some really good applications. It's really pretty too. I just love pretty much everything from Rabbit Labs. It's all absolutely gorgeous. And as promised, here is an offering from Cyber Bros. This is actually their version of the Mayhem board. I I think it might be discontinued at this point because it looks like it's offline on the attendee store. However, you know, might as well take a look at it. It's still pretty cool. Got the ESP32 cam on here. This is a 900 megahertz CC1101. We've got the top and bottom GPIO pins because you can flip this thing around and use it as a nanny cam and use it for um, a couple different things, which is kind of fun. And then on the back here, we have a cool little Cyber Bros design. 
Uh, you can see it's it's printed on a uh, build plate that has those little cool fractally things on them. Pretty cool. You could go a little bit lower on the line width for initial layer and get rid of some of those voids if you want to. It's all up to your own personal style. Then we've got kind of a relieved backdrop. So you can see that like kind of almost stringiness in there. That's caused by just the bridging of the gaps there. I'm sure that's the design and like kind of appeal that he's going for. But yeah, not bad. One oversight on the case you'll notice is that it doesn't sit flat because of the CC1101. Uh, really quick, easy fix for that. Just kind of cut a notch out of it. But yeah, in general, that's not too bad. It's even got a Mayhem SD card. Can I get it out? Yep, there we go. And then here's our Mayhem SD card. Pretty cool. Also sent over a bunch of GPIO pin covers. These are pretty nice. I think some of them are actually TPU. But yeah, if you want to cover your pins up, these guys will do them for you. Also included were a couple of these little Flipper Zero faceplate covers. Oh, I actually like the way they color shift on that. That's super cool. And this guy is a red with kind of a carbon fiber vibe to it. So we can kind of pop this on the front of our Flipper Zero. Let me grab the case and I'll show you what it's supposed to look like. So yeah, if you have a case and just kind of have it on like that, it looks really cool. Actually, if you don't have like a fancy clear shell or something, these are a great substitute and it gives it a lot of character. So yeah, I actually really like the way these came out. They also sent this FDM printed Flipper Zero case. Now, they're not selling these that I can tell because I'm pretty sure this is ZR Kraken's model. I'm not sure, don't quote me on that. But they did a pretty darn good job for FDM. Using like a non-resin printer to flip, print a flipper shell is extremely difficult. Cause yeah, you can see all of the, this was all support material, but it came out pretty good. The pinholes, GP or the pinholes, the uh, pogo pinholes are okay. They need a little cleaning out, but you know, I feel like you could probably use it. And this is TPU, which is kind of neat. I don't print a lot in TPU, so it's just kind of interesting to see different stuff. We have the front piece here, which is again, dimensionally all pretty good. I can't really fault it too much. Aside from again, knowing that it's printed on a, on a FDM printer, it's so hard, these overhangs did a pretty darn good job with those overhangs. I've printed this before, normally it comes out terribly. So honestly, really pretty good job on this print, I gotta say. So those are some of the latest boards I've gotten for my Flipper Zero, and they're all pretty cool. Now I have been kicking around on the Q and A's whenever they pop up on the official Flipper Discord, and I do know there's a few things that they've got up their sleeve. I also know that Scotope's got a little bit of heat when I leaked all this stuff about the Flipper Nano, so I'm gonna keep it on the download at least for now. Are there any other cool Flipper Zero GPIO boards you want me to check out? Leave a comment down below. As always, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe. It helps me out a ton. If you see me at DEF CON, definitely give me a shout out. I have more merch to give out than I can possibly give away. So give me a shout and I'll hook you up. You guys are absolute legends. We'll catch you next time.